Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Palani Appan, sir. Yes, sir. You uh, wonderful talk. And uh, predicting diabetes. Yes, sir. In a particular person. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, predicting sir. Predicting diabetes in a particular person yes, by sir. assessing his risk factors is a first step in prevention of diabetes. And you have explained it very well. Yes. So, thank you very much. And uh, mm, next uh, speaker is uh, Dr. Arvindji. Yeah, I think uh, Dr. Sachin Gupta, sir, is there, sir? Dr. Sachin yes, Gupta, sir. is you? Oh, yeah, Hemant. Dr. Hemant Antani. Hemant Antani. Dr. Hemant Antani is a close friend of mine. We studied together. Oh. Okay. Then priority to your <laughs> friend. Yeah. Hemant is a close friend of mine and uh, is a colleague for me. And he will be talking on body composition analysis, how important for clinician it is. Over to Hemant. Hemant is not there, it seems. Do then Dr. Sachin can... It basically takes care of all these three things. One thing is the total body water, which is intracellular and extracellular water. We also measure lean body mass, dry lean mass, body fat mass, and weight. So basically, if you look at the entire you know, crux of body composition, it is body fat versus lean mass, which is taken into consideration. Now, very briefly, we'll just see what are the methods by which the body composition analysis is done. We have got anthropometric measurements, skin fold test, hydrostatic weighing, computed tomography, air displacement plethysmography, dual energy X, DEXA, as very commonly known and very much familiar to all of us, and bioelectric impedance analysis called BIA. So what exactly we do in anthropometric has been doing in our clinical practice day in and out. We do the weight and height and from weight circumference and hip circumference. And by measuring all these four, we basically come up to two very important measurements, which are waist to hip ratio and body mass index. Now, if you're looking at the waist uh, uh, circumference, all of us know that now there are certain set standards by which we can make out that patient is whether having a vulnerable to the risk. So if the man uh, waist inches is less than 37 and women is less than 31.5, they will fall into low risk. And if for men, if it is more than 40 inches and women more than 35 inches will fall into high risk and in between are the intermediate risk. And uh, if you, the, this is even more sensitive uh, parameter is a waist to heap ratio. Now, if the patient who is in low risk, we find that uh, the ratio is less than 0.8 in women and less than 0.95 in men, and the body shape is called as a pear. Now, if you look at the moderate, it is between 0.81 to 85 in women, 0.96 to 1 in men, and we call it as an avocado kind of body shape. And the high, where the women is more than 0.85 and men more than 1, which is a apple shaped, this is a high risk category. And this is the time where we really to intervene and ask the patient to follow the lifestyle modification. Now we have been doing this and we'll still continue to do this for a while, although we know that uh, there are certain disadvantages that we will see later. And the body mass index, it's actually measured by weight in kg by divided by height in meter square. And uh, the BMI, all of us know if it is less than 18.5, it is underweight, 18.5 five to all 25 is normal then 25 to 30 is overweight and then class one obesity then two and more than 40 is class three obesity 40 to 50 is almost morbidity and more than 50 is called a super obesity so these are the grades by which we actually we have graded the patient as per the bmi values but uh, the, there are limitations of bmi and all of us know now you can see the picture two picture here you can very clearly see the person on the left side is so fit and the person on the right side needless to say both of them have got the same bmi and because BMI does not distinguish between body fat and muscle mass. In fact, uh, there are many super athletes who have got high BMI and very low fat levels. So this is one thing which has to be kept in mind. And that is how the body composition analysis has come into play. So the more accurate, comprehensive and realistic measurement is body fat percentage. And that is what we have to aim at. Now, the 
Skin fold thickness is a very common thing which is applied by the skin uh, calipers. The skin fold thickness measurement provides an establishment, uh, est estimated the size of subcutaneous fat deposit, which is basically the fat under the skin. And by estimating the thickness of this area, an estimation of the total body fat can be made. And these are certain, you know, uh, calculators which are available by which we can actually come up to the total body fat. The limitations are that it's not very accurate and there are incorrect results if the skin thickness is more than five centimeters. So it has a lot of uh, limitations and that's why yeah, there are better methods which are available called hydrostatic weighing. Now weighing under water actually calculates the total body fat by density of the body and it is based on a basically Archimedes principle. Uh, underwater weighing is regarded as the gold standard for body composition measurement as it is one of the only body composition technologies that have been compared directly to the cadaver analysis and that's why this is actually is very pretty important. Now this is also very important by which we can actually come up uh, mainly the all of us know the subcutaneous fat and the visceral fat. The amount of visceral fat definitely has a way higher risk and as compared to the subcutaneous fat and this computed tomography will scan and provide the accurate high quality information on the body composition and the body composition and uh, the including the muscle mass visceral fat and subcutaneous fat so this also is very important taste by which we can come up to how much is the visceral fat then uh, the method, this method, which is called as the air displacement plethysmography, this method measures the volume of a human body by measuring the volume of air according to the changes in pressure in a chamber that you can see on the left side. First, weight and the volume of the persons are used to calculate body density and the percent of body fat and the fat free ratio. Time required for measurement, uh, you know, is relatively short because you can just finish this test in three to five minutes and the examinee can uh, continue breathing in the, the chamber as opposed to the underwater weighing. So that is where this actually is more, more convenient. And this method is known as a, also known as a gold standard because it allows the body composition analysis and produces accurate measurements using the volume just like underwater weighing. And that's why this is a very important uh, method. Now DEXA, all of us know the dual energy X-ray absorptiometry. The DEXA actually is a, you know, the imaging method that measures the body weight in terms of BMC, lean and fat based on the de decrement of X-ray on the image obtained by exposing to two different X-rays. And this method takes about uh, five to 30 minutes. And uh, it has got a very high accuracy and it can measure the body composition of bones and density, body fat and the muscle mass for different parts. And the advancements to the technology affords DEXA the ability to differentiate lean and fat, allowing this technology to advance from a two compartment model to a three compartment model. And BIA, which is uh, the bioelectric impedance analysis, is a method of measuring impedance by applying alternating electric currents to a user to measuring their volume of water through impedance values. And uh, this is a non-invasive method, as you can see, where the uh, it involves the placement of electrodes on a person's feet, hands, and both. A low level of electric current is actually sent through the body, and the flow of current is affected by the amount of water in the body. BIA devices measure how this signal is impeded through the different types of tissue. The muscle has got a high conductivity, but fat actually will slow down the signal. And that's how actually you come up to the estimation of fat. So BIA determines the resistance to flow of the current as it passes through the body. And it provides the estimate of body water from which the body fat is calculated using selected equations. So this also is a very a pretty fairly accurate method by which we can come up to the body composition analysis. Now, the most important question is that that why it is important to know the body composition. Now, most diet and fitness goals focus on weight loss or gain, overlooking that two people of the same sex and body weight may look completely different. That what, that's what we saw a couple of slides back from each other because they have got a different body composition. Uh, body composition describes the amount of fat, bone, water, and muscle in the body. 
Measuring the body composition will guide the persons to understand their body's unique makeup and help them to identify areas to work on to improve the overall health and wellness. And I think that's the most important uh, uh, clinical application of the body composition analysis. And the measurement of body composition allows the documenting the efficiency of nutrition support, very important point, tailoring the choice of disease specific and nutritional therapies and evaluating their efficacy and you know, putative toxicity. It helps to assess the percentage body fat to guide the patient to focus on fat loss and not just the weight loss. Very important point on the fat loss and not just the weight loss. And I think this is an important paradigm shift which we have to keep in mind if we want to make our patients, you know, risk-free. So the, I'll very quickly go through two, three slides uh, before I complete. And what are the parameters that we basically measure? The most important thing is the percentage body fat which is more accurate than BMI as we saw. And uh, these are the levels which should be borne in mind by all the clinicians that the percentage of body fat, uh, fat is, you know, 10 to 20% for males and 18 to 28% for females. So this should be the guidelines, you know, when you're actually taking care of your patient. And then uh, another important thing is a skeletal muscle mass. Now skeletal muscle mass is crucial for morbidity, mobility, posture, and strong immunity for long-term health. And I think uh, this is also very important. The body water is either intracellular or extracellular, and they are valuable in their own right. But the monitoring extracellular water in particular can provide deep insights. If you notice an increase in extracellular water, but not intracellular water, this could be due to acute inflammation from overtraining. And I think now that we find so many, uh, you know, young dates with undue exercises, uh, this is something which is very important. So desirable extracellular water and total body water ratio should be less than uh, 0.339. Now, lean body mass is very important because lean body mass is the sum of ICW, in ACW and dry lean mass. The lean body mass is the weight of the everything in the body except fat. And for this reason, it is also called as a fat-free mass. Lean body mass includes uh, muscle, water, bones and organs. Usually increases in the LBM reflects an increase in muscle mass and is considered an improvement in the body composition. That's why you can actually monitor your patients. However, people who do not maintain normal body water ratios may have increased LBM due to swelling caused by the strenuous exercise and activity. This is also a very important clinical point. Now, these are the methods by which actually you can find that uh, the, you can get a complete analysis and you can see on the right side, there's a very extensive report by which we can actually come to so many conclusions at whatever points we discussed. And this is now available, which has become very easy for us so that the patients are also helped to a great extent. To summarize what I actually discussed, the body composition describes the amount of fat, bone, water, and muscle in the body. It is very vital to know all components of body to guide patients with is not a very reliable indicator of health. The percentage body fat is most important marker to predict health and the focus must be on the fat loss and not just the weight loss. That's a very most important message that I want to give. And the skeletal muscle mass is crucial determinant of immunity. The various accurate methods, as I already discussed, are now available to estimate the body composition. So thank you very much for your patient listening. And thank you once again, Dr. Bansi Sabu. It is my bad luck that I cannot be there uh, at the live. But thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to record my presentation. Thank you very much.